RC20. So this is a free patcher preset plugin by Daniel Sikowski, and it's basically just a recreation of RC20 minus the reverb module, and it uses all stock FL Studio plugins. Here, I'll actually go ahead and go into the map. You can see all the different plugins and everything, kind of how he put this together. It's kind of a jumbled mess, so it's kind of hard to see, you know, exactly what's going on back here. But, you know, the only thing you really need to know is this module guide, you can you can read this and it'll tell you a little bit of information about direct wave, which is this, uh, which you can change out the uh, effects presets or like the actual sounds themselves. So he's using this direct wave in order to do that. So what I wanna do in this video is kind of show you how this plugin works a little bit. I actually spoke with Daniel a little bit about this plugin. He reached out to me and asked me to do this tutorial. And so I spoke with him a little bit, had a conversation with him about kind of some of the features of this plugin. So toward the end of the video, I'll include some of that, um, just some thoughts from him as to, you know, how he went about putting this plugin together and that sort of thing. Interestingly enough, uh, it turns out, I think because of COVID, there's a few people who recently who have released free patcher presets, uh, plugins of this RC20 like emulator. So I haven't tested out any of the other ones. Um, I know there's another one. If you join my Discord server, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video. Um, one of the people in the Discord server post a link to a different free version of, of uh, it's like a different RC20. So you can check that one out. But anyway, like I said, I haven't tested the other ones, but I have messed with this one a little bit and I'm mostly just impressed with how much work and effort went into creating this. Uh, the surface control, he created all from scratch. And, you know, as you can see, I mean, the attention to detail on this had to be very time consuming. I think he, he said it ended up taking him about six weeks to create the whole thing. And I figured the least I could do was create a little tutorial for him, shout out this plugin. Of course, there's gonna be a link in the description of this video to where you can download this plugin and load it up in Patcher and use it if you want. But let's go ahead and dive in. I'll show you a little bit about how this plugin actually works. So before I jump into the plugin, I just wanna briefly mention, this is where you can download the plugin. It's the ImageLine forum, and he's created his own thread, giving you tons of information about the plugin. There's a little screenshot. So if you wanna download it, he has a, kind of an updated version from the original one he posted. And then some other instructions on here. You are gonna to need to download these noise files in order for this to work properly. Properly. Within the noise module, it has, you know, some like record noise, tape hiss, different type of like effect sounds. So you'll have to download this in order for that to work properly. All right, so let's take a look at this plugin. Um, first things first, so I'm just gonna play a little something. Just a little loop that I created. All right, so let's go ahead and get a little bit of noise going on here. So I can turn this on and bring this up a little bit and go ahead and hit play, and then we should be able to hear some noise. Now what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit just so you can hear just the noise. And so we have a few different types of noise here. We actually have six different types. So I can layer these if I want, or I can do one at a time. And another cool thing about this is, I mean, obviously we have a gain control, but we also have a tone control. So I can make this, you know, more trebly or more bassy. And then another thing that I was just really impressed with about this is the flux. Um, so what the flux does is it kind of creates like a randomization effect. And within the noise module, what that'll do is it'll create places where it stutters and, and kind of makes this more randomized and sound more like a scratchy record, I guess. So let's take a listen to that. So that can be a really cool thing to play with. And obviously, you know, within the wobble, it's also a really cool effect. Uh, it's, it's something that I think is a little bit unique to RC20 and not something that you see in a lot of lo-fi emulation plugins, but it's definitely something that makes this plugin a lot cooler. Okay, so let's go ahead and enable the wobble. 
and I'll bring this up a little bit. So this is a wow and this is a flutter and the wow is kind of a slower wobble. Uh, the flutter is a faster wobble. And then we have the flux capability, which is what I was just talking about, where it kind of randomizes things. So obviously you can adjust those settings to get it where you want it, play with it. Um, but just those two modules are, in my opinion, the what makes this plugin so cool. So we also have a distortion module. I don't think I would necessarily use this module a whole lot, but one cool cool thing about it that you know Daniel was, was pretty excited about, uh, he did create this low pass, high pass filter thing. So you can kind of hone in on a specific frequency and kind of add distortion just on that. Um, so it's kind of a cool feature here. We'll, we'll experiment with that. Um, let me just add a couple other distortions. So you can kind of hear that, how I can hone in and, and make it more mid-rangey. Uh, so that's, it's kind of a cool thing. Let's mess with the digital. So I'll go ahead and turn this on, add this up. So the digital is basically a bit crusher. Uh, we can control the rate and the bits. And then we also have a low pass, high pass filter. Mix knob. So that's cool. Bit crushing is always fun. Uh, we have a magnetic, which is another sort of uh, kind of wobble, wobble-ish, noise-ish uh, module. So we'll take a listen to this. Now another thing that I kind of forgot to mention is the stereo feature on the wobble and then we also have one here on the magnetic as well. So just another cool effect to, for you to mess with. Let me mute this one. Also this magnitude fader up here. This is basically a master fader for all of these buttons down here. So this controls all five of these. So if you have like all, all the modules on and you wanna just control the magnitude with one fader, you can do it there. So we also have a low pass and a high pass filter down here, which is basically just you know built into the global settings of this plugin. So everything's always going through this and, and you can you know mess with this to, to create your own sound if you wanna do that as well. And then we have a tone knob as well with that. So that's pretty much all there is to this plugin. I did have a nice little conversation with Daniel where he um, kind of filled me in on you know how he went about making this plugin and some of the features that he likes about this plugin. So if you're interested in hearing a little bit of that conversation, I'm gonna go ahead and cut to that now. Okay, so uh, main thing that I'm curious about with the plugin uh, is how you went about like the actual graphical interface like within within um, Patcher, because I mean you here. Let me let me go ahead and get this plugin loaded up just so I can look at it. But I mean you went all out with the with the graphical interface. Like I'm super impressed with that. So can you can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I think everybody who who used Patcher knows that it's quite hard to put down like a good looking interface because like the buttons and the sliders won't snap to the grid and everything yeah um so <laughs> it was it was pretty difficult to do this but yeah it, it just uh took the time and designed the buttons and sliders and set the colors um which was also really a pain yeah because, um no it's it's super time consuming it, yeah yeah you have 
to and set everything by hand and you can't like uh, copy and paste it yeah so it takes forever it does to yeah do this for for every yeah yeah no i was i was extremely impressed with just like your, your attention to detail as far as like all the knobs and just um the colors and everything i mean that that's like to me the most impressive part of this plugin for sure so the other the other <laughs> thing dollar. the other thing that i was really impressed with um was the flux so i'm curious if you can give me some insight as to how you went about doing that uh yeah sure um so i i really well i have to say this um i don't own rc20 but i really <laughs> wanted to own so um I, I built it myself, but for this, I had to know how they did it. And so I uh, read the manual mm. um, and watched their, their tutorials for the um, single modules they have. And they sa often said like it's um, randomized values or s something like that. And so I thought, how could I generate uh, randomized values inside FL Studio? And you actually can use the uh, fruity formula controller or the fruity p controller as well in the lfo section of the fruity fruity p controller to generate um, random values and um, i routed this uh, these random values to uh, like different parameters inside the modules inside the different modules so it's not every time just the volume um and yeah just so you the so box, you I would say <laughs> so you use the fruity peak controller and um inside the lfo section there on the speed how do i how do i set randomized value like how do i do this in the lfo section and you click on shape shape mostly oh random yeah it's, okay it says random yeah <laughs> and it will just generate like yeah random values and interesting really okay Cool. All yeah, that's good. To, good, to, definitely good to know about. So obviously, like I think that you know the probably the most used feature of RC twenty is the wobble section. Yeah. Um, yeah. So <laughs> that's definitely. Uh, so I'm assuming with the stereo, you have a stereo button where you can you can make the wobble sound stereo or mono. Um, yeah. And I'm assuming that's done with like what a chorus effect or something like that. Uh, not really, actually. How did you um, that, do that? <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit proud of this module because it was very hard to, like, get the exact, or not the exact, but, like, almost the exact same values as in RC20 because you have to, like, do very, very little adjustments on the, the pitch bending. And, yeah, it took me a lot of time to, like, really get the same effect. But for the stereo part, I just split the signal into like a, ref, a left signal and a right signal. And then I put the, I think it was a left signal out of phase, also using the through P controller, you can, can change the, the phase when of the LFO. And so the, the wobble of the sine wave starts a little bit later or at a different point, not really later, but at a different uh, value. Different position in the phase, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's correct. And for the wow and flutter slider on the top, mm -hmm. um, I actually used um, two 3P controllers with the LFO module um, combined. So the wow section is one slower LFO, and the flutter one is... Um, like a faster one, but um, on top of the value of the wow. So you have like a flutter inside the first wow sine wave. That's how I think they did it in uh, RC20. Right. Uh, with the rate, you adjust the amount of the wow and the flutter. So you can like make it really, really hard. It's, it sounds really cartoony <laughs> very quickly if you right. put the... <laughs> Right, very, uh, very heavy. And for the pitch bending in general, I uh, use grow speed. So that's also the reason why you have to press play to make it work. Um, because, um, I don't know, it's the magic of grow speed, I think. you Right, yeah. Um, put it through the the envelope of, of grow speed to make it work. 
yeah, and and the mix uh, knob is really just uh, the mix knob also of grow speed, but uh, actually does the same as an RC20, which uh, is creating a very, uh, I'd say, aggressive uh, chorus effect because it's mixing up uh, with the dry signal. So you have the dry signal with the very wobbly and pitch bended um, wet signals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the flux. Um, I think it's also routed to some of the pitch bending um, parameters, so it will also sound very glitchy if you, yeah, crank it up. <laughs> yeah, how do you set like a slider on the flux where it's gonna be more or less random? Yeah, um, that's a combination of um, the LFO mount, which says says volume mm -hmm. um, in the LFO section and uh, speed. So if you set the volume very high or very low, you will get some really crazy values, uh, value steps, I'd say. And same goes for speed. So if you combine these t uh, two values and route it to one slider, you can get some really crazy effects out of it. If, they, if these two values are also connected to one parameter or value, which is changing the sound, for example, uh, pitch bending. So the big knobs are the ones that are um, down here, like underneath each each yeah. module. Yeah. And then there's an on-off switch right next to it. Right. Okay. Which activates it or deactivates it. And right. The magnitude knobs um, controls like every of these five big knobs. Okay. So and the magnitude knob is essentially like a master knob for all five of these. True. But yep. it's not a wet dry knob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because... These five knobs control like parameters inside the effect module. Basically, just adjust the amount, for example, um, in, in the wobble section. So um, I really route the, like the, the ceiling of the different amounts of the parameters to these big knobs. Um, so if you put down the, the ceiling of every, like uh, for example, rate in, in wobble, um, it also turns down the overall effect, uh, which creates a totally different effect than just uh, changing it from, from wet to dry. Because for, for uh, especially the, the wobble section uh, or a wobble module, how to call it, I don't know, um, it would give you this very coarse or coarse effect if you just change it from wet to dry. So that's, I think, also the reason why they um, did it in the, in the real plugin in RC20. But it's also really like handy if you want to do uh, like a, a cool transition. You can also use the ma magnitude knob instead of the mix knob. So yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you liked it, please be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That's gonna let you know anytime I release videos in the future. I've been in the process of moving for the past couple months, and you know, resetting up my studio and my space and trying to get all settled in. Been super busy with a bunch of stuff. Um, but hopefully, you know, starting this week and, and moving forward, I'll be back to doing videos once a week again. Uh, so videos usually come out every weekend, usually on Saturday, sometimes on Friday, sometimes on Sunday, just kind of depends on the week. So keep an eye out for future videos and I will see you guys in the next video.